Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another edition of The Negro and the Law, a reply part 10. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, this video is made with the best intentions and never with the intention to offend anyone. It is neither a propaganda nor an entertainment video. It is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines referenced and study them yourself. Remember, it is well known that the trade to Africa is chiefly carried on by the British merchants, who have more ships employed therein than all the rest of Europe, by which means our plantations in America are not only well supplied with Negroes, but we are able to furnish other countries to the great benefit of the nation, Mr. Boyer, 1728, and this is from the book the Political State of Great Britain, Volume 35, containing the months of January, February, March, April, May and June, 1728, and it was published 1728. And from A. F. Mokla Ferryman, the white man's God must be white, the simple pagan would argue, and could have no concern in the affairs of the black man, but to see a man of their own color upholding the new faith gave them confidence and this is from the book British Nigeria by A.F. Mokla Ferryman published 1902 and as you may already be aware this is a response video and our previous video was removed by YouTube and we got this note on your screen that says the Renaissance your content has been removed from YouTube and it says we wanted to let you know our team reviewed your content and we think it violates our violent or graphic content policy all you can see but the title of the video was the negro and the law a reply part nine so in the event you are wondering why there is a part eight but no part nine this should help you understand why but if you think we are going to apply to youtube or appeal it we're not going to do that because all the videos contained in the video we are obtained primarily from YouTube or are in YouTube open to everyone. So we're not sure why ours was singled out but as you always know they do all they can to frustrate us so we understand that so we don't bother anymore so it's incumbent upon you to look for the materials referenced and study them yourself or look for the video itself and watch it. And at least ask questions around why it was removed remember they told us it violates their graphic content policy but those videos there are all on YouTube no single one of them is not on YouTube however we have tried to expand where you can watch some of our videos and you can look them up at rumble you can look them at at chriselviews.net or at arisetube.com or at library.tv or at odyssey.com all those places we have some of the videos and again we extend some words of thanks to our patreon subscribers with this frustrating youtube approach to some of our videos and one great way to benefit from our videos is to look for the materials referenced and study them yourself and to our continued response to the question 5 we got a while back which said with all the followers he has and thousands of dollars in donations he has accumulated over the years why does he not try to build Igbo land from within at least if Nandikano slash IPOB create projects to build either a school, a hospital, support agriculture or you know anything at least would that be so bad instead of sending the youth to their early death by fueling an unnecessary agitation remember we told you that this is certainly coming from the descendants of the slave hunters they understand how to use the law against the negroes if you notice he's talking about the killing of the youths but not talking about those killing them so when they use the army which was the slave hunters to kill them they will blame the youths for being killed instead of the army they make the army look like they are not humans they are just from the moon or somewhere else because they work with the slave master let us try to remember why it is important 
to understudy the history of the Negroes very, very well. Remember, like we told you, whoever wrote this is from the establishment, is from the descendants of the slave hunters. They understand what they are doing. But like you see, the so-called African-Americans, the Afro-Caribbeans, the Afro-Brazilians, Afro-Europeans, and even those in the Middle East are deceived to think that there is no relationship between them and those back in sub-Saharan Africa or how Africans are all the same. If you remembered when Haiti and Jamaica tried to join the African Union, you saw how they carefully prevented them from doing so because the slave hunters are in power there. They work very closely with the slave master. They were partners during the slave trade and they gang up against the Negroes. And that's why the history is very important. So have you been following our videos? And you notice we lay emphasis on knowing the Negro history and identifying who and who and or were Negroes. Lessons. Remember we mentioned about researching about Biafra and Ambazonia from the perspective of the current agitations for freedom by the Biafrans and Ambazonians, which is ideally southern Nigeria and southern Cameroon or western Cameroon, whichever one it is, the important thing is for you to know that those names and appellations were all given by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. So the slave master and his slave hunting partners will fight to sustain that while the Negroes will be fighting to get free. And it is important to know that the same group that are against Negro freedom in Cameroon are also the same group in Nigeria. Imagine if they all knew their history very well, like the Ambazonians knowing theirs and the Biafrans also knowing their history as well. If they did, this experience would have been avoided. You remember Ambazonia freedom fighters came to Nigeria not knowing the slave master and his slave hunting partners still work together and they were deported back to Cameroon. Remember, they must break the law. While they were thinking that being in another country will offer them some level of immunity based on international protocols and all that, but they forgot that those areas are still controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting partners and they work together. That's why you notice that so many West and Central African countries are ruled by the Fulani and the slave master rules through the Fulanese. And in the event you have forgotten, you see here Cameroon receives separatist leader, 46 others deported from Nigeria. Remember it is through the slave hunters that the slave master makes all of us look foolish. So ideally, those people that tell you we are all Africans, you will notice that they will be silent about this because they are usually the descendants of the slave hunters. You notice here that while you might be thinking that they are all Africans, they are siblings, the foolish ones installed by the slave master who were his slave hunting partners are used to make all of us look stupid. They can now come to say it is Africans doing it to themselves without you knowing that those ones, that's the slave hunters, are not the same as the Negroes. And that's why we always tell you to research Biafra and Ambazonia. Follow the agitations for freedom going on there. Watch the BBC. The BBC is the biggest enemy of Negro freedom. Boycott them and look for your news from other sources other than the BBC. Please remember that the deportation of the Ambazonia freedom fighters was in 2018 so that you don't think it's recent. The law. Remember the code of Moses smashing the stone tablets that contained the law which we told you is simply a code that tells them to always break the law. So while the Negroes are looking at the law, the slave master is looking at breaking that law. And so please note that neither Moses, if he existed as an individual, nor Joshua wrote those books. And the simplest proof that they couldn't have written them is Deuteronomy 34, 1 to 8. There is no way Moses could have written about his death and burial. Likewise, Joshua in Joshua 24, 29 to 31, there is also no way he too could have written about his own death and burial. So at least that proves to us beyond any reasonable doubts that they couldn't have been the ones that wrote those books. And so if the law applied to the slave master and his slave hunting partners, 
Then, things like the illegal immigration of the Fulanese pouring into Nigeria, for example, would have been impossible. But they come in without passports because they understand to break the law. So they don't follow immigration laws. And if you remember when the Nigerian army, which came originally from the slave hunting militia of the slave master and his slave hunting partners, declared freedom fighting terrorism when he declared IPO be terrorist group. Remember, those ones that he did not declare, they might try to tell you that other groups like Masob were not declared as such. It's because those ones have been compromised. They are controlled by the slave master. The same way you see them control things like Ohaneze. That's how it is. You don't need to believe us, we'll prove it to you. Their actions and inactions will also prove them to you. And based on that, permit us to ask you, has the IPOB, that's IPOB here, refers to the indigenous people of Biafra, it has both people that are officially members of the group and those who are not, and they are asking for freedom from the establishment which is controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. So the army, which was a slave hunting militia, quickly declared them as terrorists. Remember, this was the same thing the slave master did during the slave trade. It was illegal for a Negro to ask for freedom. Understand that very well. So we are now asking this question to those who support that designation. If that group has done anything that deserves that terror level from the slave hunters, Remember, the reason the slave master and his slave hunting militia, now called Nigerian army, has the face to come out to declare anybody a terror group is because people do not know their history. That's why. And then again, why do you think the Fulani headsmen, bandits, and Boko Haram are not designated as terror groups by the army? Remember, ordinarily, those killing people, burning down houses, massacring innocent men, women, and children should have been designated terrorists before those asking for roads and schools to be built or freedom. But you see how the reverse is the case. And to make matters worse, you see how they bring a bunch of people and tell you these are repented Boko Harams. Remember, they do it because they believe that the Negroes are foolish. They won't know what they are doing. Imagine if they are doing this today when information flow has improved tremendously. Imagine what they could have done when there were no newspapers, no radios, no internet, or any form of information flow among the Negro communities. Remember, the Negroes lived in their communities peacefully. There were no police, no prisons, and all that. They lived according to their laws. The slave master simply came in and hijacked those laws, which are natural laws. We shall look at those in a subsequent video. But our interest is to show you what they are doing, what they are going to do, and what they are planning to do. We ask you, if they are doing all these things they are doing today, in your very eyes, bringing on some bunch of people who had killed thousands and tell you they have repented and sent them home, and even contemplate paying them salaries, why shooting people in the south for asking for freedom? Imagine what they could have done when there was no information flow, when people didn't know what they were doing. The devil and the serpent code. Why do you somehow believe a snake could have spoken back then but no longer speaks today? Why do you think the serpent or the devil stopped speaking through the serpent today? If he could speak through the serpent back then, why has he stopped doing that? Do you still doubt us? that those books are just quotes. If yes, please conduct a research with the following research questions. When was printing invented and when was the first Bible or Quran printed? Where was the original copy of the Bible or Quran and who compiled them and when? Where is the original manuscript of the Bible or Quran? And where are they now? Remember they told us that when the spirit comes upon Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, he used to be known as Muhammad, then he will gather some people to come and start writing as he was detecting. So the question becomes, where are the manuscripts of what those people wrote? So that we can at least say it, if they have been destroyed, when? And where were they when printing was invented? So ideally, the devil speaking through the serpent code simply tells them to speak through the serpent. That's ideally why you notice that they speak through someone else. And it is akin to the Esau and Jacob code of the voices Jacobs and the body is Esau's. We shall look at that in a different video. But ideally, 
let's look at some case studies. Have you followed the freedom struggles of Biafra and Ambazonia? If yes, have you wondered why some people leave the struggle and start sabotaging the struggle? Remember, if you have studied Negro history, you might think that's how they are. If you looked at Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., you will notice that Malcolm labelled Martin Luther King Jr. a traitor. But that's a totally different scenario. But if you have noticed that some people who leave their Biafra and Ambazonia struggles tend to be speaking against the struggle, and so ideally they start sabotaging the struggle, they start disparaging those in the struggle or start denying or denouncing things they had said in the past. Have you wondered why they do that? And in the event you understand the Negro history, you might relate it to things like that of Brother Yara Shalam that moved from what he was teaching to something totally different and never talked about the religion he was talking about. Remember, both are totally different and you might think that's how we mentioned that the Negro brain swings from one end to another. But this is a different case as well. And so, if you have noticed that those who left the struggle, including the likes of the deputy of IPOB that resigned from IPOB and is now fighting IPOB and of course saying things that you are sure are not correct or even not necessary. But ideally, remember the code of the devil speaking through the serpent or the snake. That's exactly what is happening. The slave master must have made them an offer they couldn't refuse and so please bear in mind that any day you start hearing us disparaging what we said in the past or what the books are saying or trying to tell you that the books could be wrong or things like that you should know that the serpent has been taken over by the devil you should immediately unsubscribe from the channel and do not expect us to tell you that just bear that in mind because when the slave master makes those offers those people will start saying what the slave master wants them to be saying. So ideally, they can't tell you that that's what happened. So bear in mind that any day you start hearing us speaking from both sides of the mouth or telling you how the books could be things you doubt. And that's why we always emphasize that you pick up the materials and study them yourself. If that happens, please unsubscribe from the channel and go read the materials yourself. You should be able to understand that the slave master as the subtle beast is now the one speaking through the serpent based on that code. And so to better understand how subtle the slave master is, remember after doing the slave trade, as massive as it was, slaves were like oil today. That's the nearest thing to it. They were able to deceive the rest of the world that it wasn't done by them. Like we always tell you, the devil must speak through the serpent based on that code. So ultimately, you will see that they blame the serpent. Please notice that in that story of Adam and Eve, the blame doesn't ideally go to the devil directly. It goes to the serpent. And if you doubt this, you notice that it was the serpent that was caused, not the devil that entered the serpent. Understand that. So that's why you see today, if you were following the IPOB issue with the deputy that allegedly resigned, you will see that most people pour scorn curses and all that on that deputy instead of the slave master that must have been the devil speaking through the serpent and so let us reference the political state of great britain volume 35 containing the months of january february march april may and june 1728 by mr boyer and this was published 1728 and here we are told that it is well known that the trade to Africa is chiefly carried on by the British merchants who have more ships employed therein than all the rest of Europe, by which means our plantations in America are not only well supplied with Negroes, but we are able to furnish other countries to the great benefit of the nation. The Spaniards, who have great occasion for Negroes, have no share in the Guinea trade and must have them chiefly from us at first or second hand for the french and dutch are not able to supply their own colonies and though the portuguese had the greatest share of that trade next to the english yet when they obtained their siento 
which was about the year 1690. And so this clearly tells you who and who were behind the slave trade. You notice how the slave master was able to deceive everybody that it was Africans selling other Africans. Remember also when we told you about the aboriginal narrative and the likes of Kurimu Ahau and then Kalawe were being sponsored by the slave masters. Believe it or not, remember the slave master is a subtle beast. But the subtle beast, the devil has to speak through the snake. That is what you're seeing. People like Den Kalowe are speaking for the slave master. That's why he is telling you that the Negroes are indigenous to the Americas. Ask yourself this simple question. It's like a man whose daughter was raped, either in a bus station or in a train station. The man goes to court, asking the court to rule that the daughter was actually raped in a train station instead of a bus station. Whereas the man should have actually filed for damages over the rape and not where it actually happened. The important thing there was that it happened at all. So the slave master is now that devil speaking through the likes of the Nkalawe and Kurimu Ahau trying to convince the Negroes that they were in that land. Forgetting that the African Americans are no different from the Negroes sold elsewhere around the world. So whether they are Jamaicans or Haitians or Afro-Brazilians or Afro-Europeans it's the same thing and here again it says has not every merchant who imports goods into England and exports part of them an equal right to an exemption of duties on what he exports yet it is well known that though in drawback is allowed an exportation something remains to the government more or less according to the usefulness of the commodity in Great Britain. Other commodities are imported duty-free and liable to a subsidy of poundage on exportation as drugs and all kinds of goods used in dyeing and some prohibited being exported on rot as wool, which is not so necessary in England as Negroes are in the plantations because wool is but part of the English manufacturers whereas the plantations absolutely depend on Negroes and without them must be thrown up or be of inconsiderable value. So after all this you see why it is the British that is against Biafra and Ambazonia freedom more than any other country and if they left the EU you don't worry about their leaving the EU you start worrying about why they left the EU. Let us also reference suggestions as to the spiritual philosophy of African slavery addressed to the members and friends of the Church of the New Jerusalem by W. M. H. Holcomb, medical doctor, and this was published 1861. And here we are told that the British Civilization Society will depopulate Africa instead of enlightening it. The safety of the Negro lies, first of all, in his wise and humane subordination in some form to the white race. But then, as clear as this statement is, in the light of what is happening there today, including their vaccines and all the other things, including the slave hunts and slave raids, remember, an African adage says, when there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt us. So it's important to identify the enemies within. It is through them that this depopulation can happen. It was through them that the slave hunts and slave raids happened. It will be through them that things like the vaccines would be channeled. And please remember that based on Donald Trump's experience, it's easy to see that the president is just a screensaver and that simply means that there are some people behind the scenes pulling the strings. So if you noticed, for example, the World Health Organization was one avenue through which the slave master and his slave hunting partners deployed their vaccines. So Trump defunding it was not something they were happy with. So the new guy coming in will certainly be putting those things back. But the unfortunate thing is that because the Negroes do not know their history, they do not know where they are coming from or where they are going. They have no idea what the plans of the slave masters are and why he is against Trump. So ideally, those wars 
through which they channel their weapons to the subregion for their slave hunting partners to use to depopulate the Negroes will now resume as soon as they get rid of Trump. We shall look at that in a subsequent video. Our interest is for you to rise above the media. The media is the most dangerous weapon in the hands of the slave master. And one of the best ways to start boycotting the media is to start from the BBC. The BBC is the most dangerous weapon against Negro freedom. If you are in Biafra or in Ambazonia, listen to the BBC with the intention to see their lies and never with the intention to believe them. You see how the media turned people who were otherwise victims against Trump. And for those who may be from a place like Nigeria talking about Igbo president, the experience of Donald Trump should be a lesson to you because that should tell you what they will do. The same way you saw the slave hunters at that time sold you the dummy of corruption against Jonathan. Now they are selling you the dummy of security. Everybody is talking security. What does security mean? And unashamedly, for those who may be from Biafra in southern Nigeria, for example, you see how the governors who have been unable to protect their own people because they were installed by the slave hunters, mainly the Fulanese, are now saying that the Ohaneze chairman installed by the Fulani will ensure your security. You see how subtle the slave master is. Remember, the slave master must give you your king. That is their challenge with the likes of Kano and IPOB. They must be the one that gives you a king. If they don't give you a king, they will never rest understand it that's why you see everyone you see against the biafra agitation is fighting kano they are not fighting ipob they are not fighting the agitation directly they'll be telling you kano did this kano didn't do that that is the slave master's game it is the devil speaking through the serpent code deployed and we want you to sit back and ask yourself how a so-called governor of a state who could not even condemn killings in their states by the slave hunters, mainly the Fulanese, because it is the conquest march, the jihad that they are after, they are coming for. If you are in doubt, go and research the Nigerian Biafran War. Read something like the brutality of nations. You will see that it was the British that was hiding behind their slave hunting partners and they unleashed that mayhem and terror against the Negroes during the Biafran War back then. It is the same thing they are doing today. So as they have left the EU, you just need to look forward in time, develop some level of foresight, you will understand where they are going. They didn't want something to restrict them from what they plan to do. And before we look at the enemies within, let us look at the little portions of the slave trade as they happened by referencing American slavery as it is, testimony of a thousand witnesses, and this was published in 1839. And here we are told that Benjamin James Harris, a wealthy tobacconist of Richmond, Virginia, whipped a slave girl 15 years old to death. Now remember, Dean Calloway is telling you that slavery was employment, only that they were paid little. That should tell you right there that he is working for the slave master. Remember, the slave master has to tell him those things to say. And the reason the slave master cannot say it himself is everyone knows he was the culprit. So everybody will know he wants to deny his atrocities. But if the devil can be speaking through the snake, nobody will hold him directly responsible. That's why you notice in a place like Nigeria, for example, you saw that the slave hunting militia now called Nigerian army went to a place called Obibo and massacred innocent men, women and children. But then they sent their lucky, the governor of the state who is just a house negro to come and take ownership. That's how they blackmail them into whatever they want to do. Remember that governor in River State, Governor Wiki couldn't have done that. He doesn't have that power. He's not strong enough. He can't deploy the army, believe it or not. But then he has to come and speak in defense of the slave master and his slave hunting partners. That's what he's supposed to do. The reason he has to do that is so that nobody will even call the army and tomorrow they can write that you did it yourself. So you notice that most people will be cursing Wiki and forget the army that actually did it. So even if you are praying, for example, and you went to God to say, kill Wiki for killing people, it may not happen because he wasn't the one that actually did it. That's the subtle beast right there in your very eyes. And remember, we always tell you that the slave master is a subtle beast, but he's never smart. 
and he goes further to say while he was whipping her his wife heated a smoothing iron put it on her body in various places and burned her severely the verdict of the coroner's inquest was died of excessive whipping he was tried in richmond and acquitted i attended the trial some years after this same harris whipped another slave to death the man had not done so much work as was required of him after a number of protracted and violent scourgings with short intervals between the slave died under the lash harris was tried and again acquitted because none but blacks saw it done remember the testimony of the negroes was not admissible in law so when you see people jumping in nigeria and telling you about justice it's a lie those things are slave masters institutions they are designed to make the guilty innocent and the innocent guilty and in the event you have doubt as to what we have just said and you have not researched it all we challenge you to go and do is look for all the places where the fulani is massacred people sent people from the ancestral homes to internally displace people's camps remember the media will not tell you all this so imagine again if they are doing all this today with the media the internet and everything around what they could have done when there were no such things so we challenge you to go and find out why after those killings they are not in court they are not in the prisons go to the prisons and see how many fulanis you'll find there so you will understand what we're saying the slave master is a subtle beast but then the devil has to speak through the snake that is the code they are working through their slave hunting partners without that enemy within the enemies outside cannot harm us and he goes further here to say the same man afterwards whipped another slave severely for not doing work to please him after repeated and severe floggings in quick succession for the same cause the slave in despair of pleasing him cut off his own hand harry soon after became a bankrupt went to new orleans to recruit his finances failed removed to kentucky became a maniac and died a captain in the united states navy who married a daughter of the collector of the port of richmond and resided there became offended with his negro boy took him into the meat house put him upon a stool crossed his hands before him tied a rope to him threw it over a joist in the building drew the boy up so that he could just stand on the stool with his toes and kept him in that position flogging him severely at intervals until the boy became so exhausted that he reeled off the stool and swung by his hands until he died the master was tried and acquitted now remember you might say what about those people in a place like nigeria throwing their house helps down from buildings or pouring hot water and all that remember it is the bad system that's creating that if you doubt what we're saying ask any of those governors in the south to talk about a census of the number of people in their states you see that they can't even mention it because they will be afraid of the fulanese who were the slave hunting partners to the british at that time and just in case you are wondering what could be the relationship between census and what we're talking about the relationship is simple you need to know how many people are in your house to know how you can distribute the resources but the reason the slave master doesn't want that is so that he can continue rigging the elections remember he rigs the elections to put in his slave hunting partners who are in the minority but you believe it because you don't know the actual figures but if you knew the actual figures you will also know how many people could have voted so he can wake up and tell you two million votes from Ghana. we'll challenge you today go and look for your nepa bill if you are from southern nigeria and find if you can find nepa bills from northern nigeria and compare both of them to understand what we're saying because the north is enslaving the south based on the fulani jihad and conquest that's what is going on but the unfortunate thing is when you are conquered by the fulani you are going to be like the houses you are just going to be poor destitute and all that which is ideally what the slave master wants he enjoys negro suffering and slavery for whatever reason that's ideally what he likes so if you are looking at nigeria as a conquered territory understand that there are two sides to it the arabs and the europeans mainly the british likewise other western central african countries depending on which country 
was the owner of the slave farm. You don't need to believe us, you just need to look at what they are doing. So the essence is the two sides of it. You see that the Fulani is coming with the Aruga. They don't bring any development to any area. Then the slave master will come in with his own side of the conquest, which is why you will see a place like Abuja. You will see people allegedly or so said to be working for the government, whereas those are just house Negroes. They are just redistributing the money. The human capital is being subsumed and subjugated under mediocrity, which is ideally what the slave master wants. That's why you will ask for your road to be built in the south and somebody will take guns from the slave master and kill you. That's why they will be building roads to Niger and elsewhere, but will not build your own. But you're paying taxes, living in the same country with them, and you say, okay, I want freedom. They'll say, you're a terrorist. Understand it. It is hidden in plain sight. All you need to do is to read the historical records, and whatever they are doing or whatever they plan to do will become very clear to you. And so, let us reference the destruction of Lagos, published 1852. And here we are told that, and so please remember that when you hear the descendants of the slave hunters and some highly conditioned Negroes from the South who do not understand what is going on, defending nigeria as one nigeria and all that remember it's because of mental slavery and what they have been asked to say so you need to bear that in mind some of them may try to tell you how nigeria was created in 1914 without telling you that people were living there before 1914 and before the slave master came to start naming them remember the code of adam allegedly naming all the animals that's what it is if you notice the moment you mention biafra they already want to kill you Ask yourself if it is you mentioning Biafra or the United Nations that declares countries independent. Why is their slave hunting partners killing people over it when they haven't gone to the UN just for mentioning? You need to understand what is going on here. That's because you are not supposed to give yourself a name. Almost every name that you bear has to be given by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. They discuss it, they plan it and then give it to you. So that's why you see people who have different languages defending Niger Delta, defending South South, which are both English words. Remember, that's the path of the European conquest, while the Fulanese do the killing in return for European goods. You may not understand this unless you go and research them yourself or you follow what they are doing. So those people here you see defending how they are South South, they forget that they have a typical language, let's say Ijo language, Ishekiri language, Efik language, Igbo language, Ibibio language, you see that their name is going away. They are replacing their name with the name given to them by the slave master based on the code of Adam giving names to the animals. There is no way all the animals could have been at the garden at that time. Understand that the book is a good. And so the book tells us here that 60 miles in a direct line inland from Lagos is a place called Abeokuta situated on the river Ogun. This river, navigable for vessels of some burden as high as Abeokuta, has been, however, entirely closed by the people of Lagos to all trade except that in slaves. Remember, Lagos was not part of southern Nigeria until the amalgamation of 1907. You need to bear that in mind. So when you are talking about one Nigeria, it was never created for you to develop. It was created to sustain the slave trade, which we shall look at in a subsequent video. But then, our interest is going further down here where it says Abeokuta is in the Yoruba country, a most fertile tract, far larger than England. So our interest is the fact that Yoruba is larger than England and it says far larger. But you see why they have to use their slave hunting partners who are fewer based on the British feudal system to control everyone else. So that's why they are more interested in depopulation than everyone else. So when you hear people like Inam Dekano telling you how he has no regards for anyone defending one Nigeria, you can understand why. You see that Yoruba alone is larger than England, but you see somebody defending Nigeria created by England to subjugate him. So that's ideally a Negro paying for his chains. Remember the English were the biggest slave merchants on earth and Fulani Empire was the biggest slave trading empire in the world. So both of them are together against one Nigeria. So that's why you see that the slave master has carefully left the EU. So that will 
prevent him from being at least held back by other EU countries based on the EU charter. We challenge you to investigate this. Don't believe what we're saying. We don't work with belief here. We work with facts. Look at the facts yourself and try to predict and preempt where the slave master is going. The slave master is a subtle beast. And it goes further to say, it lies between Abome, the capital of Dahomey, and Lagos, 150 miles from the former, and as before stated, 60 from the latter. The country in which it is situated when Captain Clapton passed through it in 1825 had for a long period escaped the ravages of the slave trade and we find it thus described he found it well cultivated beautiful rising into hill and dale the road leading through plantations of millet yams calavances and indian corn now remember they keep trying to make you believe that somehow it could have been where people could just be sold we ask you again and again, tell us today how a man or a woman can just come and take you and go and sell you. Remember, at that time, the Negroes committed suicide if not restrained instead of going into slavery. But somebody is telling you that it could have been a sale and you buy into it. That's our challenge with belief and facts. Analyze it before you believe it. Investigate it. The slave master is never smart, but he's a subtle beast. He knows how to lie. If you wanted to test their lies, ask them something like, why those who have taken their vaccines are still required to wear masks and see what they say. Their lies are very easy to debunk, but the slave master is a subtle beast. And going further here, it says, the chief seemed to consider them as messengers of peace come with blessings to himself and his country and the general belief was that they were come to make peace wherever there was war and to do good to every country through which they passed remember at that time because the british had been condemned over their atrocities of the slave trade other countries were smaller like the dutch and the portuguese and all that but the british were the biggest slave merchants at that time so they have started stopping it and out of their mastery in propaganda and lies they were able to convince everyone that they were the good people while the americans were the evil ones so they were welcomed everywhere as bringers of peace understand it so that's why you see they are the ones supporting their slave hunting partners in a place like nigeria tomorrow you will see that they will still be the one to claim to have been the ones that are making the peace because they are slave hunting partners those ones they lack humanity they lack common sense and he goes further to say very shortly after clapperton's visit this country was ravaged by slave trade wars and the peace and prosperity he witnessed was succeeded by the most frightful atrocities and devastation it is a fearful consideration that these fell deeds were created by the ruthless cupidity of civilized men and supply of slaves to the white man has been the cause of all these miseries and as the church missionary or whatever it is but our interest is for you to see that it couldn't have been the arrow but what did they do when they finished they picked on on a handful of priests that couldn't have numbered up to 20 and blend them for a slave trade that lasted from 1434 to circa 1900 and people are not asking how could those men have lived that long could it be that the priests were there when they started how could they have captured people without an army remember there was no army when we look at how physical the slave masters religion are vis-a-vis -vis spirituality and all that you will understand what we're saying so it says here that a very large number of the Yoruba tribe who during the wars above referred to had been shipped as slaves at Lagos were captured by English cruisers and liberated at Sierra Leone where they imbibed the habits of civilized life while their hearts still yearned towards their native land. But our question here is what is this civilized life they are talking about? Remember, if the slave master wished the Negroes well, for example, in Africa, for example, in Biafra and Ambazonia, there is no way they can be supplying weapons to their slave hunting partners to massacre innocent people. So when they get rid of Trump, you will understand what we're saying. Remember, their slave hunting partners are very annoyed with Trump 
because he did not agree to be giving them weapons. So when you see them fighting, don't just join when you don't understand the root cause or why the slave master is against anyone. The Nigerians made the same mistake with Jonathan. They have made the same mistake with Trump and you're going to see what will happen. We are telling you this before Biden gets there, but when he gets there, you'll understand what we're saying. And to better understand who the enemies within are and who they were, let us reference Wit and Wisdom from West Africa, a book of proverbial philosophy, idioms, enigmas, and laconisms by Richard F. Barton, and this was published 1865. And here we are told that Eya Oyiboni Fulani, the Fula are a tribe from over the sea or white men. Note well an ethnological adage connecting Fulas with Europeans. So you see that the enemy within is closer to the slave master than the Negroes. So that's why you see they work together. And here is a comment we got from one of the descendants of the slave hunters. You might wonder how we know because their comments is usually along the same line as the comment we were responding to. And this person goes by the name Daniel Jacobs, which we know is a lie. He obviously borrowed it from the brutality of nations. Remember, part of their technique, it doesn't change, is to demonize the victim. That's why you see that in a place like Nigeria, in the Biafra freedom struggle, for example, you will see that an adult we wake up and say, Kano has committed a crime. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't shoot anybody. But the same person cannot condemn the army because the army were the slave hunters. He knows that the army will come after him. They know that the army were the slave hunters as well. You notice that the same army that claims to be protecting people or the territorial integrity of Nigeria, whatever nonsense that means, does not attack Fulani herdsmen. There are no Fulanis in prison. The same way you have other people because the dog recognizes its owner. They owned the army as a slave hunting militia. They still recognize that fact till tomorrow morning. And so the comment says, At the Renaissance, he killed the three million Biafrans that died in a demonic sacrifice to Satan. Remember, like we always tell you, everyone knows that the best way to deceive the Negroes is through religion. They are usually religious and they have their minds wherever God is. We shall look at that in a subsequent video, but everyone understands that. So he believes that if he can start telling the Negroes that the people they murdered in the 1967 to 70 genocide where the slave master and his slave hunting partners connived against Biafra, then if he puts it as the work of Satan done by the victims, then the Negroes could believe it. That's ideally what they are trying to do. You notice them trying to do the same thing against Kano today where they will tell you that Kano killed the people in his house whereas it was done by the Nigerian army which was a slave hunting terror group until renamed and given uniforms. So that's who they are. So ordinarily the slave master will use his BBC and start saying the same thing. When a lie is told often enough, it begins to look like the truth. So due to gullibility and the slave master being a subtle beast, he will use his BBC to make it look like the victim is actually the one that committed the offense. So that's why you see a sensible person, if you are wondering what they are doing, when they will tell you it was Canada that killed the 28 people in their house, that was exactly how the slave trade happened. They know that when they continued saying it, some Gully people will believe it. Then that's also why you see them going to hijack people like the former IPOB deputy to come and start saying the same thing, that Kano has committed a crime. They understand that when a lie is told often enough, it begins to look like the truth. Ask yourself how a sensible person will see where the army came and killed people and be blaming those that they killed or came to kill. So that's the same thing that he's doing here. They had done it in the past. It worked for them. That's why they are trying to do it still because it's a formula that has worked over the years. And he goes further to say, you are very naive indeed. You kick against the Old Testament but rush to review and repeat European history books and call yourself a smart academic with facts. You see how he's calling it European history books. We will show you this same person writing about European history books. 
but cannot provide us with African history books. And if, when they do, you will see that the ones they will provide were actually written from these same European history books. And because it doesn't favor him, above all, you will never hear them condemn the use of European weapons. You will never hear him condemn the use of American dollars or any other thing. It will only be when the history tries to expose who they are and how they work with the slave master and other foreigners against supposedly their own people. So looking at it without good understanding and knowledge of history, we make it look like it is the same people killing themselves. So the slave master will hide behind his slave hunting partners against the Negroes. And the comment goes on to say, I asked you one simple question because these your book reviews don't make any sense anymore if it cannot be driven to a decisive conclusion. Remember these people in a place like Nigeria, they can't pass a simple exam. To get anything into their head, you need some extra work to be done. But the slave master knows how to incite them and how to get them to be killing the Negroes for him. That's one thing the slave master mastered well. That's why you have an army that goes to war only by killing its own people, its own civilian population. In fact, the best brains in Africa will be killed by the military because those in the military are conditioned by the slave master the same way they were as slave hunters. Why not ask yourself why the same army that goes to kill people who have no weapons just because they ask for freedom does not kill Fulani Hatsmen or Boko Haram that have killed thousands of soldiers have laid many ambushes against the army. The same army will bring them and say he's celebrating those that repented. Whatever he means by repentance, no one knows except him. So that's how the slave master uses his slave hunting partners to make all of us look foolish. Think about it. These are people that are massacring innocent men, women and children, bombing soft targets, putting a lot of people in internally displaced people's camps. You don't do anything to them. You don't charge them to court. But then you go to the south and massacre people just because they said they want freedom from Nigeria. And please do not be deceived when you hear some supposed educated people, intellectuals they choose to call themselves, defending one Nigeria. They are paid to do that because they don't understand what the slave master and his slave hunting partners are doing. So when they pay them, they will come and tell you how their strength is in their number without explaining to you how that benefits somebody whose salaries has not been paid for two years or one year or even for a month. Or whatever the thing is but at least they can't tell you how it benefits a child let's say who is 10 years or 11 years and the slave hunting army called nigerian army massacres the parents and there is no government to help him out they don't explain that they will just come out and tell you those lies knowing that gullible people will believe them and he goes on to ask how did moses break the law and how is the story of saul being chosen as king in the book of samuel a code for wicked leadership please are you saying god slash europeans depending on who you think wrote or inspired the bible was given a code for wicked rulership by the passage the kind of senseless conclusions and assumptions you make baffles me at times that this is a person who says they have common sense you see one thing about them the slave master leverages on their lack of humanity and common sense. This same person will never condemn things like the army. You see how he is claiming that one man could have killed three million people. All the man did was when they started massacring innocent people left, right and center, which is their trademark. The man being the regional leader at that time was mandated by the regional house of assembly to pull them out of Nigeria. That's ideally what it is. But you see how he's turning it around to say the man killed 3 million people. So if you are an outsider, and because the Negroes do not read, they just believe what they hear. That's why the slave master is spending billions on his BBC to be misinforming them. So if you notice things like BBC, that's the most dangerous weapon in the hands of the British against the Negroes in Biafra or Ambazoni. And so how can somebody who is telling us here that one man could have killed three million people be saying to have common sense but like we always tell you they killed the victim they killed the negroes and then blame the victim for killing him that's ideally what they do 
you notice that this ties very closely to what we read about the spiritual implication of the slave trade if you have forgotten see where it says free negroes everywhere will ultimately die out in the presence of white civilization the british civilization society will depopulate africa instead of enlightening it so ask yourself how this is supposed to happen if not through their vaccines and their slave hunting partners but you see how he is blaming the victim for what they did so ideally what that is telling you is you must not react to whatever they do if you were to watch our previous path on this series where malcolm X said if you try to defend yourself as a negro it becomes illegal you become extremists you become anything the negroes are expected to be without feelings you hit them they just stand there quietly until you kill them when we look at this army as a slave hunting militia you'll see how they react when they come on slave raids and people reacted against that slave raiding remember it is expected that you have to hand yourself over to them and they kill you treat you as they like you are not expected to react so ask him now to explain what he means by the man killed three million people you'll see what he will say because these were the slave hunters they lack humanity they lack common sense if you think there is any feeling of humanity in them you are dreaming so to give him a little answer a little response even though he will never understand it what we are saying is that the smashing of the stone tablets by moses in the bible is just a code that tells them to break the law remember it is written for those who understand it as you are you may not understand it but it's presented to you as something written by some spirit somewhere which is different so the slave master understands what is written there but the negroes do not so that's what we're saying that that's indicative of the fact that they have to break the law to continue their enslavement of the negroes so this is why you see that the fulanese are coming in with weapons from outside nigeria breaking immigration laws nothing is happening they go to communities massacre them and kill them nothing happens because they have to break the law they go to places and take over their land they kill people and nothing happens that's what we're saying that's where that is coded the slave master knows this and will not report it either and as to the question about the king and bad leadership you can at least know that whatever leadership you have in west and central africa who are handpicked by the slave master from his slave hunting partners you see that from this code here in first samuel chapter 8 you will see what the king is expected to do if he doesn't do that he becomes a bad king that's why you notice that trump has become bad because he wasn't doing that he didn't start all the wars in the middle east and start bombing libya and start removing gaddafi and all that so the same thing in nigeria for example jonathan was a bad president because he didn't start killing people and start doing whatever you see they are slave hunters doing today so you see where it says in verse 11 this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights he will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses and they will run in front of his chariots that's why you see them taking people from the south put them in the army lay ambush against them and get them killed the same way they use them as slave hunters but they put them in the army if you watch the dobber when they southern and, and their caliphate is doing such things you will see that most times there will be some children usually not fulanese walking along with them those will be the slaves that's what is written here coded and he goes further to say some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots so is that not what the kings there do is that not the same way you see them having war brides and all that is it not the same way you have them in the army and everywhere even if they are commanders they are still under their king who are usually from the slave hunting partners of the slave master and he goes further to say he will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers is it not the same thing you see them do do you not see that those who were in the nigerian army had war brides during the 1967 to 70 war is it not the same thing as you see coded here 
why do you think the slave master is rigging elections in places like Ohaneze to put Mietiala candidate? At least you see this letter here was written five months ago and today they still put who they wanted there. It's the same thing. They must give you your king. That's the problem they have with Kano because he does not accept them to come and lord it over all of us. That's what you're seeing. So the reason the slave master and his slave hunting partners are abusive, trying to demonize him, is because that's a trick they have always played. But at least you see it clearly that ordinarily Mietiala should have no business in Igbo social cultural anything, but they infiltrate everywhere and control the people through those kings that they handpick, which is exactly what is being coded here. And it goes further to say, he will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants, which is exactly the same thing. Go and look at the difference in Nepal bells between the north and the south in Nigeria. Go and look at the difference in school fees. Go and look at every other thing they do or pay for in the south and compare it with the north. You will see that it's the same thing they coded here. And it goes further to say, he will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants, which is the same thing when you call your tax or your tithes or whatever you say. If you remember the slaves, that was how they used to collect the tithes in slaves. If you doubt us, conduct your research and put it in the comment section to say this is not the case. And he goes further to say, your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he would take for his own use which is exactly what they did during the slave trade they could just come to anywhere they like and take the people's crops the same way you see them today using their cattle to even destroy people's farms to create hunger it's the same thing it's an agreement they have with the slave master and he goes further to say he will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourself will become his slaves when that day comes you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen but the lord will not answer you in that day at least you know that it's usually said that the negroes had no king which you can investigate yourself so the code here is telling them what the king should be doing that's why they do it the way they do it otherwise what is the business of the fulani in who is ruling him state what is the business of the Fulani is who is really in Abia state but he installed all those people you see that's why you see that they can't even condemn killings in their states so if Fulani can come from Futajelon, come from Mali outside Nigeria breaking the laws of immigration come to a community kill people there and the supposed governor cannot even issue a statement because he is in the hands of the Fulanese. So this is where it's coded. That's why you have bad leaders all over the place in Africa because they have to hand pick those who can do that. You saw that when Jonathan came, because he wasn't doing this, they turned against him. Look at Trump, for example, because he wasn't doing the same, they turned against him. If you doubt us, put it in the comment section and we take it from there. Let us reference History of Nigeria by AC Bonds, and this was published in 1929. And here we are told that the Fulani, especially in the upper classes, afford a typical example of the effect of constant concubinage with Negro slaves. They consider themselves a white people and those of the pastoral Fulani who have kept their blood pure possess a light bronze complexion and other physical characteristics of the Hamitic races, but the town Fulani are as dark as the pure negro tribes and to the superficial observer differ from them but slightly in other respects but our interest is for you to see what is said about concubinage with negro slaves which is close to what you saw coded in that place of what the king will do remember they insist on ruling everywhere even when they can't rule in every situation you see them in nigeria where they will want to be minister of education with a master's or bachelor's degree and then the negro will be under them with a phd or even a professor that's the thing you need to understand what is coded there and if you looked at the map here you can see where they are distributed all over the place they come into a place and one day they rise up kill the king and take over the land that's what they've been doing check the historical records the slave master knows this and all he does is to hide behind them and use them as enemies within 
And to better understand this man talking about books written by Europeans, we challenge you first to bring us the ones written by Africans so that we see whether it is even different from what these ones are writing. At least from what you people are doing today, you don't need a fortune teller to tell you what you could have done in the past. And so let us reference the story of Africa and its explorers by Robert Brown, MA, PhD, Volume 1. And this was published in 1907. And here we are told what this person telling us about books written by Europeans do with the weapons made by Europeans. And here it says most of the towns were well fortified considering the force likely to be brought against them. The reason was that the Fulas, that's the Fulanese, were a warlike people capable of placing 16,000 men in the field and prone to hostilities against their neighbors since they could not obtain European goods without slaves nor slaves without making war. However, only the young and strong were taken. The old and feeble to avoid trouble had their throats cut, but they excused themselves for this barbarity by declaring that the people whom they thought raided, robbed and murdered never prayed to God. So it is the same people, this person talking about books written by Europeans is the one that is doing this because of European goods. In a subsequent video, we will show you where they are laying claim to all the resources anywhere. Remember, they don't manufacture anything. So the slave master discovered this. So that's why you see them, they will say, the oil in Bayosa, oil anywhere belongs to them because the slave master has told them what he wants. It is their duty to go get it. If it means killing everybody to get it, that's what they are going to do because they can manufacture it themselves. But then when they are done, the slave master will help them to use his BBC and other lies even in the academia to say it was done by the people themselves. That's why you notice that they will blame Kano for killing they did themselves. The army will do killing but they will blame the victims for killing them. It's the same thing. The slave master is the one that conditions them along that line. And before we round up, let's look at little things that they consider when you hear them shouting things like one Nigeria. At least you have seen that what they designated as Yoruba country is far larger than England. But the same people living the EU are encouraging you to stay in one Nigeria because they know they can hide behind their slave hunting partners to carry out their atrocities against others, their man's inhumanity to man, against people that did nothing to them. But like we told you, the slave master is a subtle beast, but he lacks humanity the same way his slave hunting partners do. And that's where the problem lies. So if you were joining them to sing the Salmon of One Nigeria, you forget that the reason they want One Nigeria is for them to enslave the negroes that's ideally what they are doing so if we looked at the us for example the same way we looked at the uk it tells us that there are about 11,710 nigerian students so if we took each of them to pay twenty-six thousand dollars in school fees per annum we see that every year based on that alone they make the amounts you see on your screen in millions so that alone should tell you what happens when they take the money that belongs to let's say all the people in a state to feed only 10 people so when you see those 10 people shouting about one nigeria or one cameroon and you join them you are just helping to sustain your suffering to sustain your pain and your sorrows because you need to do all you can to separate from the slave master and his slave hunting partners which is what he doesn't want in any case here we come to the end of this edition of the negro and the law a reply part 10 we thank you very much for listening and we encourage you to find time to look for the materials referenced and study them in detail thank you very much once again for listening peace